What's going on guys? This is Rob and we continue now with part two of Time Runs Out. Now, in the last video, we spent a lot of time focusing on Steve Rogers. We spent a lot of time talking about Steve Rogers, talking about what it is that he was doing, his pursuit of the Illuminati, as well as talking about Sunspot forming the Multiversal Avengers based on the uh, members of the Avengers that had left Steve Rogers after he began hunting the Illuminati. Now, what Sunspot also did here is he split, the, I guess, split his own Avengers team into two groups. The first group would travel into the multiverse and try to find a way to stop the collapse of the multiverse. The other group would stay on Earth in order to try to maintain law and order since Steve Rogers basically wasn't doing that since he was devoting all his time and resources to tracking down the Illuminati. And so what we do here is we basically pick up with the Illuminati and what we find is that when multiple members of the Avengers had left Steve Rogers that one of the individuals who had stayed was Susan Storm. And the idea here here was that Susan Storm was avidly against the actions of Reed Richards. She was staunchly against him, basically uh, trying to evade Steve Rogers, or at the very least, presumably destroying worlds. But what we learn is that this is actually a ruse, that in fact, Susan Storm has been a spy for the Illuminati inside the team of Steve Rogers ever since her introduction. Now, we don't exactly know when this happened. We just know that she became part of that team at some point in time. And so what happens here is that this basically gives us an understanding of why it was the Illuminati were always able to stay a step ahead of Steve Rogers. This was really kind of, I guess, some tips that were given at the hands of Susan Storm in addition to the combined intellect of the Illuminati. And so what we do as we learn this information from Susan Storm and Reed Richards is that we also see that Susan Storm gives a note to Reed Richards, which was written by Valeria Richards, by the daughter of Reed and Susan. Now, we haven't really talked about Valeria Richards in depth, and the reason for that is because she doesn't really have a whole lot of instances where she has important parts in stories. She has uh, important parts periodically, such as in this story, but for the most part, she's just a, a, a supporting character who's just there so that we know what it is that they're doing in any particular story that happens to be going on that involves a Fantastic Four. Now, it was kind of a brief runover. Valeria Richards is a sort of hybrid between Reed Richards and Susan Storm in the sense that she can create force fields like Susan Storm can, but she can't make herself invisible. Valeria Richards also has an intellect that rivals both Dr. Doom and Reed Richards, and she's also able to neutralize the powers of Franklin Richards. And so in terms of what it is that she's capable of, she's a relatively interesting character here. But nonetheless, the note that she gave to Reed Richards basically says that there's no way to stop the uh, collapse of the multiverse, and that the only thing they can really do at this point in time is try to find a way to not lose. That is to say, to try to make basically these multiversal lifeboats, these boats that will allow them to survive the collapse of the multiverse, and then join whatever this new multiverse is that comes into existence after the collapse of the current multiverse, which as we know, this will be Battle World. And so this is basically Marvel telling us this is presumably the road that Reed Richards is going to, uh, going to take to allow them to step into the Battle World universe without actually dying at the end of everything. And so what happens here with Reed Richards being confronted with this information is he basically realizes that the only way for them to successfully bring an end or to at the very least try to survive the collapse of the multiverse is to effectively end the fighting with Steve Rogers. And so what he does is uh, he and the Illuminati basically send out a signal which Steve Rogers immediately intercepts and then tracks, uh, eventually taking him to the location of where the Illuminati are at. And so what happens is Steve Rogers basically brings an entire complex of S.H.I.E.L.D. forces along with the remaining Avengers at his disposal and they immediately descend on New York and try to attack the Illuminati. But what happens here is that while this conflict leads to almost a total destruction of New York, we eventually see that Susan Storm basically abandons her role as being a spy for, uh, for Steve Rogers and she begins placing all the members of Steve Rogers' team in these sort of force field cubes in the sense that they can't escape. And what this does is it gives the Illuminati a chance to basically begin talking to Steve Steve Rogers to basically tell Steve Rogers what it is that they're doing and what they've been doing this entire time. And so once everybody's pretty much settled down, Steve Rogers again reminds the Illuminati that the whole reason why he's hunting them is because of the fact that they had been destroying worlds. But the Illuminati argue that at this point in time, while they have destroyed a world previously, the only thing that really matters at this point is one, stopping the cabal of Name of the Submariner, which again is composed of Thanos, a group that's basically been raising different worlds and actually 
has been destroying other worlds, but the other thing that they need to worry about is trying to survive the collapse of the multiverse. And so what they do is they devise a plan to basically get rid of the Cabal. But what they say is that when the next occur uh, incursion takes place, that they're going to have Namor the Submariner travel with the Cabal to whatever that planet happens to be. And what they're going to do is uh, Namor the Submariner is going to abandon the Cabal on that planet and then destroy that planet, effectively destroying uh, the Cabal entirely. But what happens here is that when uh, Namor the Submariner and his Cabal travel travel to this world, that uh, Black Panther and uh, and Black Bolt travels to the world along with Namor the Submariner. And what they do is they basically knock Submariner down. They knock him out and they leave him on that planet. They trap him there and then they basically allow the incursion to continue, which pretty much means as far as Namor the Submariner is concerned, he is going to die along with the Cabal. But what's really interesting here is that while the incursion between this alternate Earth and the mainstream Marvel Earth is taking place, what we find is that a third Earth appears. And this third Earth is actually the ultimate universe. And so what happens is in a last act of desperation for survival, we find that Name of the Submariner, Thanos, and other members of the Cabal jump to the ultimate universe. And so what we'll find later on is that we'll pick up with them when they arrive in this new reality with Ultimate Reed Richards and those characters and try to figure out a way to, again, basically make it back to their own reality or else survive the end of the multiverse. Now, from here, what we're going to do is we're going to jump to the multi multiversal Avengers, which are, again, out in the multiverse, composed of Hyperion, Odin's Sun, Nightmask, and Starbrand. Now, again, if you're curious about Nightmask and Starbrand, I would highly suggest that you check those videos out. They're really a little too in-depth for us to explain in this video. But what we find is that Thor and the uh, Multiversal Avengers had been traversing the multiverse as we would expect them to, and along the way to their current location, they had come across an alternate reality whereby a version of Mjolnir had existed that was designed specifically for those who were unworthy. And so what happened was that that alternate reality version of Thor was defeated, and Odin's son took that hammer for himself, and that's why it is that he currently has a hammer in this uh, this current run, or in the current events of, uh, of Time Runs Out. But again, where we had previously believe that the Black Priests, which again are basically mystics with unknown origins, while we believe that the Black Priests are basically trying to speed up the destruction of the multiverse by destroying other worlds, what we learn is that this isn't necessarily the case. What happens is that as soon as the Multiversal Avengers arrive in what appears to be the home base of the Black Priests, they immediately attack. What happens is that as the Multiversal Avengers are fighting the Black Priests, the group is joined by Doctor Strange. And what he tells us is that the Black Priests have been trying to save the multiverse that rather than destroying worlds to try to speed up the end of everything they've been destroying the world destroying worlds in the hopes that it would balance everything out almost like a pot boiling over and then turning down the heat that's basically what the black priests were trying to do here but ultimately they've been unsuccessful up to this point and so what dr strange says is that they should combine forces the multiversal avengers should combine with the black priests and they should split into two teams the first team should go after raboom alal and the second team should go after the Ivory Kings. Now, at this point in the story, we didn't know who the Ivory Kings were, but of course we know right now that the Ivory Kings are basically the Beyonders, which again, I have a video on that covers both the Beyonder from the original Secret Wars event, as well as this group, the Beyonders, and what it is that they're capable of. With that being said, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. I hope it was uh, hope it was clear as mud. Uh, time runs out, gets a little hazy after a while, but uh, hopefully I explained it in a way that you guys understand. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> I will catch you guys later. Peace. Make it